everyone. Thanks for uh, being patient while I get set up here. My name is Ms. Gabby, and I am so happy to be seeing all of you today. We're going to be learning a lot about some artwork by someone named Mandy Moreland. And she is here with us today. Mandy, can you say hi? Hi, everyone. So glad to see you. So Mandy is an artist who has an exhibition up at Strathmore with us. And um, she is multi-talented. She paints and um, she has done some Sumi ink paintings as well. Um, so she paints with oil paint, which is a type of paint that uses oil just like cooking oil. Um, but it's just a little bit different. And then she uses ink, which is all in black to paint dancers. So um, we're going to be looking at that today. And if you have any questions, there is a button at the bottom of your screen that says raise hand. We'd love to see you raise your hand if you have a question. Um, and at the end, we'll have some time for questions too. So if you're having trouble with the button, you can always just wave at the camera and I'll, I'll see you. Um, so fabulous, let's get started. And I'm just going to ask Mandy, can you tell us about your art making? What made you want to become an artist? That's an interesting question. Thank you for asking. Um, I, I, maybe I really want to start with, I think everyone's an artist and there's a ton of talent out there and it's just kind of what you decide, you know, what you want to do. Um, I started out dancing because I started when I was very young and um, I always loved dancing. Um, and then later, in when I got a little older, I always, um, I started to paint and I just enjoy uh, working with the paints as well. I feel, uh, maybe I just wanna share, looking at everyone, that um, dance is very physical. You use your body. And I know a lot of you use, um, are in sports and play instruments. And dance is just another language, another way of expressing how you feel and um, learning about your body intelligence, maybe, is something I just wanted to add. Okay. That's great. It's a great reminder to know that dance uses so much of our bodies. Um, if you are a dancer, wave at the camera so we can see that you like to dance too. Right. I see a few people. <laughs> yes, lots of people love to dance. Okay. And if you think about how much you use your bodies, what does that look like? So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Miss Mandy's exhibition. So this is a picture of her exhibition at Strathmore, where she has all of her pictures up on the gallery wall. And you can see as we get closer that her work is all in black and white. Mandy, can you tell us what you're using to make your black and white images? I'm using a water-soluble ink um, and a brush. Um, there are lots of different kinds of brushes you can use, um, and I experiment. Um, uh, the process for these is on, uh, I use um, sort of a stiff paper, a Bristol board, and um, I'm inspired by what's called Sumi art, which is um, a, uh, an Asian-inspired uh, art form. Um, it is about painting the energy. So you're not going to see a lot of fingernails and eyebrows and, um, and things like that. But the idea is when you look at the art that you feel the movement of the dancer. And um, it's a very responsive kind of art. You, um, you can all get a giggle or a laugh out of this, but um, usually my first one, when I take an image, my first one is the one that's the best. And I work for two more hours and keep doing them over and over and over again, the same image, to see if I can get that chi, they call it, or get that life spirit. And usually the first one is the one that works the best. So, um, yeah, that's a great note for all of our young art students here is that you've heard Mandy say that she tries over and over and over to get to capture the energy of the dancer. And sometimes the first one is just the best because she's 
she's free and she can um, capture that energy of the dancer. She sees it. Um, so, but what's interesting about Sumi Ink that you all may know or not, or so that you all may not know is that there's no erasing. Is that right, Mandy? You Correct. can't erase it? Exactly. You cannot, uh, there's no way to fix an image. Hence why you do them over and over again. Um, so what you see is very what we would call spontaneous. It's in the moment, kind of like dancing, right? Or doing a sport or playing an instrument. When you make that passage, that is it. And then it's, it's you know, then you go on to the next. So what I've done is in these images is capture that one moment where you can um, see the movement, feel the energy, and also sense it in the brush stroke. So, so um, that's kind of the way I would describe this, I guess. Yeah, so it's a lot about feeling, just like dance is about feeling. So think about how you feel when you are dancing. You feel perhaps free, energetic, joyful, and that is coming across in so much of her work because she is so free in creating it. It looks like we have um, a question with someone raised their, uh, raise their hand in blue. Can you tell me what your question yeah. is? You have a question, Peter? What's your question? Tell her your question. Don't, don't tease her. No, I don't think we have a question. I'm sorry. Okay, just excited. I think we were trying to, we were trying to dance. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. We'll, we'll have perhaps some opportunities for that later on. But as you see here, we've also got to some oil paintings. And here's a close-up of one of her oil paintings, Ballet Conversations. So, Mandy, what can you tell us about why ballet is inspiring to you? And maybe a little bit about what ballet is. Okay, ballet is a very traditional form of dance. Um, there are a lot of techniques out there. There's Cunningham and Graham, and there's so many, Twyla Tharp, there's so many different techniques. and. Uh, and so, um, for me, I always, um, I was just, it was just what, where, what I'm comfortable with. Um, so, what, let me, help me with that question again. I want to, I want to be clear. So, so. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm just curious about the movements of dancers and why that's appealing to you to draw and paint. Okay. I, I think um, it's just, it is um, a language. I think that's where I would go. And it's a process um, and it's a language and it's not about perfection. It's not about being perfect. It's about finding um, um, the dance piece it, for me is about um, learning. It's about learning, discovering muscle, um, you know, uh, working technically. Um, it is, and the, uh, I'm not sure I'm answering this question quite right. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. totally fine. I mean, yeah. I hear you in saying I that. Think I know what I want to say about it. I, I think this is what I would like to share with our, our group today, is that dancers have a communication. There's a mm -hmm. communication that happens um, in movement, just like with music. You communicate um, uh, feelings or you communicate um, uh, you know bars of music or um, so there's a connection with dancers that is not spoken it is through the movement that you share your experience and so when I call it dance conversations it's kind of a juxtaposed between talking and moving but really when you think about it dancers when they're on a stage all together and for all of you out there who and even a team a sports team when you're out there working together that is your communication but you know you're not really talking you're just using your body to communicate and so that to me is what um the painting is it's another way to communicate uh, physically, actually, what happens in your um, physically to communicate? Um, I hope that may, that came out all yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it does. And kids, if you can think about when you're dancing, and I think what's a, a really easy way to how to think about it is, you may be feeling a certain way. Let's say you're dancing because you're happy. 
you're communicating to people that you're happy with your dance movements, with your body. So it's a lot like talking. So when Mandy says that there's a special way about communicating and talking with dance, it's all about using your body to express yourself. And I think that she's captured these wonderful expressions, these different bodies talking and expressing themselves through their bodies. Because if you paint a picture, you can't hear what the person is saying, but you can see what their body is doing. And for example, here in this piece called the jump, this person is jumping, perhaps with joy. There's so much energy. And you can see that she's using her brush all over. She's, it's not that you can see every detail perfectly because when you see someone jump, the movement, it makes everything move. So she's got movement in her piece too. So you can see that we are learning from the movement of this person that they're saying, they're talking through their body, that perhaps they're jumping for joy. Does that, does that resonate, Mandy? Does that sound about yeah, right? Yeah, that is exactly, uh, exactly. You're right on, right on. Awesome. Well, Mandy also does these black and white pictures, but you can see that she's doing color too. And when we look at her color oil paintings, we have um, a lot of dancers that maybe remind us of another famous artist. Um, and that famous artist is Edgar Degas. And Edgar Degas has oil paintings just like Mandy and pastel pieces. And you may have seen his work at the National Gallery of Art. And for parents, I have some links that I'm going to share at the end of this because you can take a tour of his exhibition online now at NGA. Um, and there's some other resources for that too, including a little ballet class for kids if they want to take that. Um, and what I found really interesting about Degas and looking at Mandy's work, here's one of his drawings, is that not only does he do drawings and paintings, but he does sculpture. And here's a sculpture of a, a piece in fourth position. Oh, somebody says, I do a lot of tipsy dances like this one, like this picture, like, woo, I like that. Um, and so if we look at this sculpture, we see that there's a rod holding the dancer up because the dancer is balanced on just one hand or one leg, I'm sorry. And what the, the museum did is they took an x-ray of this. <laughs> just, just like if you imagine getting, if you've ever had an x-ray, it takes a picture of what's inside. And look what was in, inside. This was inside that sculpture. Hmm. They got, had put all, lots of pieces of metal underneath the sculpture to hold it in the position. Much like lots of our, um, much like lots of our uh, uh, bones hold us in the right position, right? So if you think about it, it's almost like Mandy has a relationship with this, right? You see that Mandy has done these, these lines and we see some of the lines in this, in this sculpture here. So I just wanted to bring that up so everyone can see how even another artist working in another medium is also inspired in some of these same movements. So Mandy, what do you think about that? I don't know if you've seen, I, I don't know that I've shown you this picture, uh, but I thought it looked so much like your work. I think it's very interesting and very um, intuitive um, that to balance, because the dancer is balancing, and I bet you all out there know how to balance on one or two legs, right? Or um, on an arm and a leg. And, um, and so what you're looking at is that um, the, how that happens, sort of the physics of how you, how you balance with your body. And I think I see some people balancing out there, which is way cool. Because one of the things that's so wonderful is that we have fun in our bodies and we can, and moving is fun and balancing is fun. And that is right on, Gabrielle. <laughs> Miss Gabrielle. Absolutely. Oh, we yeah. see some people demonstrating their dance moves to show yeah, balancing exactly. just like this dancer. Absolutely. Right. And so Balance. if we can go, yeah. go back to some of your work, we can see that there are so many people or so many um, people in your work balancing too. So 
Um, here we have Jazz Man on the left. And jazz, everyone, is a type of music, but it's also another type of dance, too, which if you think about ballet dancing, it's very, um, very sophisticated. Everybody is lifted up high. And jazz, you get a little more loosey-goosey. Every, everything's a little bit more free. And so you see here with Jazz Man that he is really, he's balancing, but in a very different way. And you can see how his arm is coming out and sort of balancing that. So we have two, you know, we have one arm on each side and that helps us balance when we're on one foot, just like this. You might raise the other arm to be balanced. Um, so that's something in dance that she's communicating here. And you can see even his leg is wrapped around the other one. That's a tricky one, isn't it, Mandy? <laughs> it's is a tricky one. I know. That's one of the reasons I really enjoyed this, this piece. It would be interesting, you know, you were showing your Degas painting, you know, where the, and um, maybe a challenge would be, where are the, we call them construction lines. So where would, where is the balance on this painting? And it's very important that uh, dancers uh, know where your feet are, because if you didn't know where your feet are, you'd be in big trouble. So, or even playing a sport, you got to know where to, how to kick the ball and where to have your feet. So um, I, I would say, you know, one of the things when you're looking at some of these uh, paintings is where is the balance? Where is that construction line that Gabrielle was showing? Very important yeah. with the drawing. And a good way to think about construction lines in your, in your artwork is where are all the bones in the artwork? Maybe try drawing a person, but look, where are the bones? Where is my arm bone when I lift up my arm? That's going to help you draw out those lines. And that will actually help with our activity. So um, everybody, I'd like to invite you to try something at home. And in just a second, let me go ahead and share with you what I did. <laughs> um, so this is a quick activity you could do at home. <laughs> you, I encourage everyone to try out your dance moves, try putting on some music and dance and have, have your family member take a picture of you, maybe with their phone, and then use that to draw the body. And you can see, I, I don't know that I did a very great job, but you did. I was very loose with it. Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> try, not to, try not to erase and don't be afraid to put lines on top of one another, one another. If you feel like you messed up, just go right on over it because all of it is just gonna show more movement instead of looking completely still. So the more lines you add, perhaps the more movement you'll see. So I encourage everyone to try this at home. Now, I would love to open, um, open it up for some questions. If anybody has any, you can either push the raise hand button or you can wave at the camera and uh, we'll call on you. Anybody have any questions? Or you can type it in the, uh, in the chat. Looks like Dylan says, I do hip hop and, and sometimes ballet. That's amazing. Wow, I love that. Thanks, Dylan, for sharing. Very cool. Does anybody, Very cool. Does anybody have any questions for Mandy about her artwork or maybe about her life as a dancer, too? Why do you do, Mandy, why do you only use black? Can you repeat that for me, Gabrielle? What? Can you repeat that? Dylan, can you say the question that. again? Yeah, Dylan, can you say the question again? Yes. Um, um, why do you only use black in your pictures? Okay, good question. Thank you. Um, very good question. Uh, this is, and maybe that's important in terms of being an artist. Um, sometimes you paint with colors. Sometimes you paint black and white. Sometimes you use a pencil and sometimes you use crayons or paints. So this particular group of paintings that you're seeing are me using ink. And that's 
uh, and maybe to help understand that too, it was a start for me. It was something, a way to start painting with ink. And I think I felt most comfortable with black and white. So um, I hope that helps. I will say, you know, I'm wondering with your question, if you're maybe even considering using some color next time you paint or trying the black and white and then going and starting to add color. Cause I know that's something that I want to do too. Really, um, I, I, great question. Thank you. Yeah. And it's helpful to think about that ink is, um, when she talks about painting with ink, it's very similar to what's in a pen. So ink, um, you know, comes out black just like you would in a pen. So, but she uses a brush. Now, uh, Mandy, we have some uh, questions in the chat, so I'm going to read them out loud. So okay. Leah says, how long have you been making art? I've been making art for about nine years, although I've probably always made art when I was younger, but I've seriously been painting or career-wise been painting for about nine years. But I always painted and I always enjoyed it starting from, I think, you know, early, early on. So starting young, you know, if you have it and you want to do it, go for it. <laughs> so that's really encouraging to think to keep on painting and, and then maybe change it into a career and start doing it as a job. Now, exactly. Sarah, Sarah asks, how long does it take to complete one painting? Uh, depending on the medium or depending whether you're using paint or ink, the inks are very quick. The inks are five minutes. But I, and an oil painting can take weeks, months, um, usually takes a lot longer. Acrylic paint, which my hunch is a lot of you are familiar with, uh, it, it dries quickly. So you can make those paintings a lot faster. Um, and so I usually keep about five paintings in my studio that are still going and they're not finished, but they, um, and I go over them over the weeks and months. And Dylan has another question. Dylan, can you, can you speak your question, please? Yes. Um, um, do you draw anything else besides dancers? Yeah, that is a really good question. Yes, I like to draw ho horses and I like to draw flowers. And I have done some uh, uh, paintings of uh, soccer players, uh, horseback riders. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think, tennis players. Do you draw, do you draw anything? Like with a pencil? Yeah. Um, Parker? Yes, I do draw. In fact, you know, under a painting, when you look at a big painting that has a lot of color, most times the artist has drawn the painting underneath the, the underneath in pencil or with some, with something to draw it so they, they know where they're going. It's like a map. So some, um, that is a very good question and very important. Drawing is probably the most important piece of being a painter. Thanks, Dylan. We also have a comment from Leah that says, I love your art and it has inspired me to start painting. That's fabulous. Thank you. Yay. Congratulations. I wish you well in all your art. You, you will, I'm sure you will go far. That's fabulous. Thank you, yes. and thank you. That's quite a compliment. So um, I, we can still take some questions for the last five minutes, but I just wanted to add um, to the chat, I'm gonna send to everyone a link for a page that I've compiled that has lots of different links that everyone um, can follow to uh, explore the Degas exhibition at the National Gallery of Art. If you're interested in taking a little ballet class, there's one on YouTube that's there. Um, and there's a couple different options, like an audio tour uh, about one of Degas' paintings. 
Um, and, you know, I bring up Degas because um, people like Mandy, um, artists who are inspired by dance, have really been capturing dancers in their artwork for a really long time. It's been an inspiration that has continued for so long. Um, and um, I'm just so happy that we got to see Mandy's take on that, which is very unique with her ink um, and different types of dance and movement. I think even you were mentioning all the different movements that you capture. I've even seen one of skateboarding too. Oh, that's right. There's skateboarding. Yeah. So, yeah. so definitely follow those links, but I would love for everyone, you can visit our website, strathmore.org. Um, if you're interested in looking more closely at her artwork, I've also saved um, the link to all of the images we looked at if you're interested in seeing that. And you can also um, just Google Mandy Moreland. I'll, I'll type her name out and she's got some works online. So please feel inspired by her and her work to, to capture the movement of dance in, in your own homes and with your own choice in medium, whether that be with color paints or with a pencil or with ink. Dylan says, I like the, I like Degas paintings. Me too. They're so much fun. So, yeah. So <laughs> Mandy, was Degas at all an influence for you? Absolutely. I, um, I think I've always been enamored and love looking at his work. Um, and for the exact reasons that you were, you know, talking about, you know, there's so much movement, so much spontaneity, excitement, and you can relate. It's a conversation with you and the painting. It's a conversation with you. I can hear you. Oh, don't you dare. Don't. Oh. Sorry, I'm just going to mute everyone. If okay. <laughs> so go ahead. So you were Thank saying you. that it's a conversation? Excuse me? Okay. You were saying that it's, it's a conversation with Degas' work. Absolutely. You know, when you're looking at the painting, it is like um, the dancers speak to you in the way that, you know, you would, um, that I have been very um, enamored with and really inspired by. Um, I love, um, I love feeling that a painting takes me someplace, you know, or opens the space up or kind of um, makes me feel like I can, I want to twirl. So, um, and I think Degas does that in his paintings. So hope you all do get to see that exhibit. Yeah, absolutely. So we are ending at 11, but does anybody have any last questions? You can either push the raise your hand button or wave at the camera or say something in the chat too. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us. Leah says, thank you so much. I had so much fun. So did I and Mandy, I hope you did too. I did, um, happy painting. <laughs> yes, happy painting to everyone. Absolutely. I see some claps, some Yay. claps in the back for people I too. Thanks to everyone, everyone's <laughs> clapping for you. Well, um, please join us again. Um, on our website, um, strathmore.org. Uh, Dylan also says thank you. Um, we have a listing for all of our upcoming programs. It's going to be every other week on Friday at 1030. And next up, we're going to be talking with Teron Cooper Sorrell. If, you remain, who, if you've been to Strathmore before, you may remember his artwork. Um, and we have some other artists coming up um, that are scheduled with us. So please join us again. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at that time. Thank you, Mandy, again for joining Thank us. Thank you. It's so good to see everyone. Have a great day. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.